OK, so for this question then, we're given these parametric equations for the curve C and asked to find out dy by dx. So in order to do that, you're going to need to use the chain rule. And you should already be familiar with it. As a quick reminder, remember dy by dx is equal to dy by dt times dt by dx. Or you can think of it as dy by dt divided by dx by dt. So first of all then, let's start with dx by dt. So we've therefore got dx by dt. And if we differentiate the variable cos t, you should be familiar with this result, it's minus sine t. So you've got the constant multiplying with that gives us minus 2 sine t. And when it comes to differentiating the cos 2t here, that's going to be minus 2 sine 2t. Again, you should be familiar with that result. So if you multiply it with the root 3, we get that dy by dt equals minus 2 root 3 times sine of 2t. So we now need to just get dy by dx. And I'm going to go for this division version. So that's just going to be dy by dt over dx by dt. So this result divided by that one. And so if you do that, you're going to get this. OK. Now, I notice that the negative 2's cancel one another out, so I'm going to cancel those out. And we can work with the sine 2t. You should already be familiar with this identity here. Sine 2a is identical to 2 sine a cos a. So the a is really this t now. So I could write that then as root 3 times the 2 sine t cos t in place of sine 2t. And that's divided by the sine t. And what I can see now is that this sine t here cancels out with the sine t there. So what I'm left with is 2 root 3 cos t. And that's our result. OK? OK, for this part of the question then, we've got to find the equation of the normal to this curve C at the point P where t equals 2 pi upon 3. Now, in order to appreciate this, I find it easier just to draw a sketch. And when I say a sketch, this is not necessarily representative of this curve here. I've just drawn some squiggly line and I've drawn my normal to this line at the point p, where t equals 2 pi upon 3. It just gives me an idea of what I've got to do. If I'm to get the equation of L, then I'm going to be looking at the form of a line. And that line has this form, y minus y1 equals m, the gradient, times x minus x1. And that will give me the equation of L. The problem is, I don't know the gradient of L, and I don't know a point on that line with coordinates x1, y1. Well, I don't know those at the moment, but that's what we've got to find out. Now, I can get the gradient of L very easily just by working out the gradient of the tangent at the point P. I get that by looking at dy by dx and substituting t equals 2 pi upon 3 into the equation. That will give me the gradient of the tangent then at p. And then I can use the perpendicular gradient rule to get the gradient of L. Remember that perpendicular gradient is the negative reciprocal of the gradient here. And once I've got that, I also need a point on the line for our x1, y1 coordinates, and I can get that by substituting t equals 2 pi upon 3 into these two equations up here to give me that point. So I'm going to be working out the x, y coordinates at p to give me x1, y1. So there's the method. So let's get started. OK, so we need to get that gradient of the tangent. 
we've already found out from the previous part of the question that dy by dx was equal to 2 root 3 cosine t. So I just need to substitute my value of t equaling 2 pi upon 3 into here. Cosine of 2 pi upon 3 turns out to be minus a half. So if you put that in there, you're going to end up with minus root 3 for the gradient of the tangent then at p. So using the perpendicular gradient rule, the negative reciprocal of that gradient, we're going to have then the gradient of L is going to be equal to 1 over root 3. Now we need our coordinates at p and I just need to substitute t equals 2 pi upon 3 into here to get the x coordinate. The cosine of 2 pi upon 3 is going to be negative a half. So you're going to end up with 2 times negative a half and that's going to give you minus 1. So already you can see that this sketch is no way accurate. The x coordinate here is clearly a positive value, not negative 1. As for the y coordinate, again just substitute t equals 2 pi upon 3 into here. If you do that, you're going to get root 3 times the cosine of 4 pi upon 3. Remember I double the value of t. Work that out, you've got root 3 times minus a half and that's going to give you minus root 3 upon 2. So we've got our coordinates now, we've got our gradient of L. So we should be able to get the equation of L. So I'm just going to remove this method now. And so we're in a position to say that the equation of L is y minus y1, the y coordinate there, equals the gradient 1 over root 3 times x minus x1, negative 1 there. OK, now I'm going to multiply through by 2 root 3. If I do that, we end up with this line here. And then if I rearrange this by subtracting the 2 through root 3y and the 3 from both sides, then rearranging it gives me this form here. 2x minus 2 root 3y minus 1 equals 0. OK, now please don't write in and say this sketch is not accurate. I know that. All it was is just to give us an idea, a feel for how we were going to tackle that problem. OK, so in fact, what I'll do is I'm just going to remove that sketch to avoid that problem. OK? Now for the last part of this question then, We've got to find out where this normal L cuts the curve again, C, at a point Q. Now in order to appreciate this, again I've drawn another sketch. It's not an accurate sketch by any means. This curve that I've just drawn here, C, is not necessarily this curve here. So all I'm just trying to show you is that our normal L can cut the curve C at two points. And we've got to find this point Q then. So in order to do this, we have to use simultaneous equations as it's a point of intersection question. So what I'm going to do is number these equations at the top, 1 and 2, and the one here for L3. So if we number those equations, 1, 2 and 3, we need to solve them simultaneously. And the way you do this is you substitute 1 and 2 into equation 3. So if we do that, what we're going to get is this equation here. Next, I'm going to want to expand this and also pick up on this point here. We've got cosine t here and cosine 2t here. Remember, when you're doing trig equations, it's good to get them into the same trigonometric function. So I'm going to go for cosine t, not cosine 2t. We should be familiar with the expansion of cosine 2t. It's a double angle. It's the same as 2 cos squared t minus 1. 
So if you put that in and expand the brackets, you're going to get this. 2 times 2 gives us the 4 there, cos t. And here we've got minus 2 root 3 times that root 3 is going to be the minus 6. And I've replaced cosine 2t with 2 cos squared t minus 1. OK, and there's that minus 1 equals 0 on the end. So I'm going to now expand this out. And if we expand that out, we're going to get this result here. Noticing it's leading towards a quadratic equation, I'm going to want to rearrange this and make this a positive term. So I'm going to multiply through by negative 1. And if we do that, you're going to get this quadratic equation here. And to solve this, this is a quadratic equation in cosine t. I could either use the quadratic formula or factorize it, because it does factorize. So if we factorize it, we get this line here. Now, because it's factorized, I can see that each of these factors would be equal to 0. And if this factor equals 0, cosine t would equal negative 1 half. And for this factor, if it equals 0, cosine t would equal 5 sixths. So we've got those values in there. Now, with cosine t equaling negative 1 half, this looks familiar. Because if we were to take the inverse cosine to both sides, we would find that t equaled 2 pi over 3. And we realize that that's the value at p. So that means then at q, cosine t must equal 5 sixths. Now I don't need to work out the value of t because I can quite easily get cosine t just by substituting 5 sixths in here in equation 1 to get our x coordinate of q. So if you do that, you're going to get x equals 2 times 5 6, which leads to 5 thirds. Now when it comes to working out the y coordinate, we've got here cosine of 2t. But remember that cosine 2t, I showed you down here, is this identity, comes to 2 cos squared t minus 1. So we can see that y will equal root 3 times 2 cos squared t minus 1. And at q, knowing that cosine t equals 5 sixths, we can work out what y is just by substituting it into here. And if you work this out, you'll find you get 7 eighteenths root 3. And that leads us then to the coordinates of q. The coordinates of q are going to be 5 thirds, as we found up here, and 7 eighteenths root 3. OK, now I'm just going to remove the sketch purely because it's not accurate and I don't want to mislead you. It was only there just to give us a feel for the question. So I hope that's given you some help on that question if you found any difficulty. Thanks for watching and bye for now.